I was born in 1925 in a little town, Wheelers, Mississippi. That's between Baldwin and Boonville. My dad, Kirk Beard, my mother, Sarah Beard, and he was an agent at Wheelers. Of course, all the freight, never, there wasn't any interstates. Everything moved by rail. The trains would come by with a merchandise car and a stop and the brakeman would unload the freight on the freight platform. Then they had a drayman that would take it to the stores, to the little country stores. Then we moved from uh, we moved from Wheelers to uh, Columbus, Kentucky. Yeah, we went to Selmer, and he worked there a while as an operator. Before. Tennessee? Yeah. Okay. Because they talked about me uh, as a two-year-old coming to the office to see him, and, and, uh, and then the first place I remember living was at Columbus, Kentucky. My brother, who is four year, was four, four years younger than me, had diphtheria. And I vaguely remember him having that diphtheria. And we lived upstairs over the depot, and my dad was the third trick operator there. Well, back then, operators, it was all uh, Morris, uh, Morse code. You know, code, mm -hmm. not day. And uh, they did telegrams for the general public, you know, and they did all that Western Union. But it covered all the train orders. All the trains ran by train orders back then. And they had wooden order hooks and like a clothespin on the hook would put the orders in them. And he would come out and hold it up, and the brakeman would get out on the side of the engine and get your wooden hook, take the orders out, throw the hook down, and he'd have to walk up the track and get the hook taken back. But that's, as a matter of fact, right after I started to work in 43, I was riding a steam engine coming south, and that's downhill coming through Columbus, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a red board, and the brakeman had to go down, get down on the steps, and reach out and catch that hook. And I, I, I caught the order and got the order out, but I, I had on a pair of goggles because cinders were very hot cinders, you know, coming back from the steam. One got in this eye and, and damaged my eye pretty much. And which gave me the trouble the rest of my railroading days. Well, I went. I started school in in Saltillo, Mississippi. Now, Dad was agent and operator Saltillo, and we moved from Columbus to Reeves, and from Reeves, of course, the depression was on then and jobs are scarce, and that's the only job he could hold. There's a job at Saltella, Mississippi. That's just this side of Tupelo. And uh, that's where I first started school. Well, that was the M. Noah back then, Mobile and Ohio. Okay. And I think it was around 1940 or 41 is when they, the Tennessee division that ran from Jackson to New Orleans merged with the Mobile in Ohio that ran from uh, from Mobile to St. Louis. And uh, then made it Gulf Mobile in Ohio well, uh, until 1972 and then they merged with the Illinois Central. They had took the night ticket job at Jackson and left Sal Tullow. That's when I moved up there. 
and I was 13 years old. And I started to junior high on Dedrick. Miss Lily F Fletcher was the principal there. Uh -huh. And Professor Himes was, he's over all the schools here then. And then I, I went to high school on the Allen Street. The only high school we had was there. One year, and uh, I wanted to go to, well, my dad wanted to get me started on the railroad more than I did, really, to get my seniority established. And, uh, of course, I wasn't but, but 16 then, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me uh, go to work till I finished high school. So I went to a private school, Miss Steele's private school on Chester Street right across the street from old Webb Williamson Hospital. She was accredited private school. And uh, of course, I got, in one year, I got two years credit. I got my, and and that, that's where I got started on the railroad. Early. But I wasn't but 17 years old.